Yo, what's going on, guys? Tan my for simple snippets, and welcome back to a new video tutorial under digital electronics, Boolean algebra, and logic gates. So today we're going to be covering a very important topic, as the title of the video suggests. We're going to be taking a look at racing or race around condition in flip flops and other digital circuits. So if you've been watching this entire playlist, we've covered quite a lot of flip flops. Only a couple of them are left, I guess. Only master sleeve is left, and in these kind of circuits, that is the sequential circuits, we've talked a lot about. Race condition and how we need to avoid this race condition because it is an undesirable condition in these digital circuits. So we never really talked in detail about what this race condition is and how it affects digital circuits. So today we are going to be talking completely about race around condition or racing or this undesirable output which always we avoid in digital circuits. And we'll take a deep look into how exactly it works and what exactly happens when racing condition is arrived. So for this, make sure you have a good idea about what are flip flops, and I hope you know what is a clock and the different triggering methods. That is the edge triggering and the level triggering. We have the separate video on clock and level triggering in this playlist, and we also have different kinds of flip flop. Especially make sure you know the JK flip flop. We've talked about JK flip flop explicitly in another video. I'll drop the links of all these videos in this description because all those concepts are necessary before you get. To this race condition, and that is the reason why I'm covering this after covering all those topics. So, if you're watching or following this entire playlist, the JK flip flop, the clock, and all those videos will be above, and this would be after all those topics. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a quick recap on the JK flip flop. So, as you can see over here, we have a circuit diagram of the JK flip flop. However, this is a level triggered JK flip flop. So, if you watch the JK flip flop video in this playlist. That video was for a edge triggered JK flip flop, and that is the reason why we were getting a toggle state. Okay, to quickly give you a recap about JK flip flop, JK flip flop is used to avoid the race condition, and it is done by using these two feedback loops, the pink lines which you can see, and this gives arise to a toggle state. So a toggle state is basically a controlled state, which means that we can use that state, and it is used many a times in counters and other circuits which we will see in future. However, that only happens when there is edge triggering. Okay, so that's why I'm saying that the video that we saw for JK flip flop was edge triggered. And when it comes to level triggering, the same toggle state is now becoming a race state or race condition. And we'll see how that happens. So we'll also understand the basic difference between racing and toggle. And yeah, moving on to the truth table. So this is the truth table of JK flip flop. All the initial states. That is when clock is zero. No matter what J or K is, we always get the latch state or memory state or previous state. We've discussed this in the JK flip flop, so I'm not going through each of these states and each of these cases. We are only interested in the last one, wherein the clock is one, J is one, and K is one, and that's where that toggling happens. But in level triggering, we'll see how that is converted into race. So yeah, moving on, let's let's actually see the last state and let's try to understand what level triggering is. So over here, you can see a graph, and this is the timeline graph. Of the signals, okay. So the green one is the clock signal. So this is the clock which goes from zero to one, and you can see the waveform, right? So this is the level triggered waveform, which means that there are different levels. So there is zero and one, and the JK flip flop is only activated when the clock is high. So only during this part, this part, this part, and this part, the JK flip flop will be activated. So That's what is given over here. Only when the clock is one, you can see the JK is operational. When the clock is zero, no matter what the input, the JK flip flop always remains in latch memory or previous state. Okay, so this chart basically is a timeline chart. So I, this is the time on the x-axis, which is going in this direction, and then these are the two levels, zero and one. So zero and one are the digital signals basically. This is J and this is K. So the J and K signals are always high. Because we are discussing this case, right? So in this case, J is one and K is also one, and we are going to be taking a look at the Q signal. What happens to the Q signal when clock also is high? So here, clock is also high. Let me just mark one, and this is what we want to find out, right? These are the two things that we want to find out. Okay, so we'll understand the output of Q, and then Q bar is again uh, exactly opposite to that. So we are just going to be monitoring the Q output. And we'll see what happens to the Q output when J is one, K is one, and clock is one. Okay, so let's start off when the clock is one, which means that we are looking at this period, this period only. When the clock is one, 
j is 1 you can see j is 1 over here and k is 1 what would happen let's first assign these values so j is 1 k is 1 clock is also 1 and now we need to assume one of the input from the pink lines because depending upon that input the output will be determined because in NAND gate if all the inputs are 1 the output is 0 and if any of the input is 0 the output is 1 right so let's say q initially was 0 okay let's say let's assume so this q is now supplied over here to k right you can see this pink line which is coming from q going above this q bar and then getting attached to the lower flip flop over here so this becomes 0 so we have 1 1 and 0 so if any of the input is 0 in a NAND gate the output is always going to be high right so this is going to be 1 now since we've assumed q as 0 this 0 over here is also fed back to this next NAND gate so this is the second lower NAND gate so this is 0 again since input is 0 or any of the input is 0 the NAND gate output is going to be high I hope you know the truth table of NAND by now because we've seen a lot of flip flops using NAND gate so the output is going to be 1 so this 1 is fed back over here now since we are getting output 1 over here this 1 at q bar is also fed back to the above j flip flop right so this is the first top flip flop so this 1 is going to be fed back from over here till here so all three are 1 which means output is going to be 0 so this is 0 so the output is going to be 1 so now the output becomes 1 now since this clock is going to be high for some amount of time since this is a level triggered jk flip flop let's say this time is t equals to 6 seconds okay so we are just assuming seconds this is usually in microseconds or nanoseconds because the switching happens very fast these digital devices are very fast but just for the sake of understanding we are assuming this t equals to 6 which means that complete cycle from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0 takes 6 seconds which means that this part will take 3 seconds so in that 3 seconds this switching is going to happen again and again right so now q is 1 so q is again supplied back as 1 over here so now this output becomes 0 and since any of the input for the NAND gate is 0 the output is going to be 1 so now this 1 is supplied over here as well as it is supplied over here and then again switching is going to happen so this is what we saw in the JK flip flop also right however what you are observing over here is this switching is happening again and again so in this 3 seconds the output will go from high it will go from high to low again and again the switching will happen so it will again go high and again low and again high and this will happen till the clock is 1 right so this switching will happen a number of times so we don't know how many number of times because it depends upon how fast q and q bar is generated and is fed back again to j and k but it will happen much faster than the level triggered time duration right because this is a digital circuit and signals are transferred very fast it's usually in micro or nanoseconds and this clock here you can see is for 3 seconds so in that time period this switching from 0 to 1, 1 to 0 is happening so fast that it is uncontrollable so this is what that race condition is okay so race condition is basically uncontrolled toggle state so again so this was for clock cycle 1 so when the clock was 1 again when the clock goes high and j and k is 1 again this switching will happen so it will go high low high low and it will keep on switching between the two states and this will happen very fast which can damage digital circuits because this is not controlled okay so for every clock being high this switching is going to happen very fast right so this basically is known as the race condition okay so this is the race condition which is also equal to uncontrolled toggling so why do i say this is an uncontrolled toggling now in this example we've considered level triggered jk flip flop what if it was edge triggered jk flip flop and and the jk flip flop only gets activated on the positive edge so this is that positive edge so every time the clock goes from 0 to 1 only that time the jk flip flop will be active and when that happens when j and k is 1 and 1 since the time taken by the clock to go from 0 to 1 is very small you can see only this much amount of time might be taken actually by the clock to go from 0 to 1 right so in that time the switching cannot happen very fast right it can only happen once or twice maybe so depending upon how fast the NAND gates operate and generate q and q bar that switching can be controlled so that's why when we use edge triggered flip flop the race around condition does not happen and that results in proper toggling okay but when it is level triggering when the clock is high for some 
considerable amount of time in that time the switching happens a lot of times so i hope you are getting my point right so when it is edge triggering at every positive edge or rising edge that switching might happen only once okay so q would go from 0 to 1 or if it is already 1 it will go from 1 to 0 and that's it but if it is level triggered if the clock stays high for some considerable amount of time so in that time the switching will happen very fast and frequently and that is that undesirable race condition okay so this over here is going to give you race condition which is not desirable when it is level triggering gk flip flop okay so this was detailed information of what is racing and what is race condition basically racing is when the output keeps on fluctuating very fast and we are not able to control that output and you can see from the timeline over here that the fluctuation is happening continuously and there is no control we cannot control that So how do you get around this race around condition? So I already told you one way that is using edge triggering method. So instead of using level triggering flip flops, you can use edge triggering JK flip flop. That would avoid it. So let me just show you the three different ways in which racing can be avoided. So these are the three different ways in which racing can be completely avoided. The number one is T by two is less than propagation delay of flip flop. So what exactly is this? So let's come back to this graph. So T is six seconds that we've considered. So T by two is going to be three seconds, right? So what we are saying is this three seconds is less than propagation delay of flip flop. So propagation delay is the delay that happens when this Q output of Q is fed back to the initial flip flops, right? So Q is fed back to K, right? So there would be some amount of time taken by the flip flop for the transfer of this output to be fed back as K, right? So let's say that is Four seconds. So if Q is four seconds, so three seconds is less than four seconds, right? So what they are saying is, if this time when the clock is high is short, and the propagation delay takes more time, so that would mean that the switching will happen only once, right? So let's say this is three seconds, and when the clock goes high, we get the output over here from zero to one, and when the one is being transferred back to K, four seconds have passed, right? Four seconds will be passed. Let's say initially we were at zero. Let me just erase this. So let's say we were at zero, okay. And now clock has gone high over here for three seconds. J is one and K is one, so switching is going to happen. So now once the switching has happened, zero becomes one, right? So one time switching has happened over here, and now this one is going to be supplied back to K over here. But that takes four seconds, right? So from zero we've got one, but since it takes four seconds. to get this one supplied back to k in that time 3 seconds have been passed and clock will go zero back again which means that the jk flip flop will be in the latch state again so when the clock goes zero you can see that it goes in the previous state which means that the next time switching won't happen right so we are controlling the switching which means that we are only going to be having a switching one time and that is what is controlled toggle state right when we are toggling we know how many times we are toggling that is one time in this case but in race we cannot con control that toggling so again next time for the 3 seconds when the clock goes high this time again the q will go from 1 to 0 and this will become 0 over here but by the time 0 is supplied back to k the clock 3 seconds would have been passed and then it will not be able to switch back to 1 right it will not be able to toggle back so only one time toggling is happening which is controlled so this is what is point number 1 that is t by 2 is less than propagation delay of flip flop second point we've already talked about edge triggering clock which means that the clock is activated or the jk flip flop is activated only on edge triggered positive edge or negative edge depending upon what configuration you have and that switching from 0 to 1 or that edge takes very short amount of time and in that time the toggling can happen only once so that's when we are again controlling it so then race does not happen it becomes toggling and the third very important setup is the master slave setup which we will see in the next video so as the name suggests there is a set of master flip flops which control the slave flip flops and then we can avoid this race condition or race around condition and we'll see that in further videos but that's why i wanted to cover this entire racing or race around condition topic so that when we go to the master slave flip flop we'll understand how we can avoid that okay so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood what is racing and what is race around condition basically they are the same racing or race around condition and how they exactly affect the output you've seen the timeline and seen how it fluctuates and it is uncontrolled so that is something that we always avoid in digital circuits 
and yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood this concept if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments that you like this video and understood this concept share it with your friends if they don't know this and if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of video tutorials like these on this channel and lots more are coming soon so you'll get notified whenever i upload a new one thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace